Hey, Pastor Antonio here for another episode of our Rock Life podcast here at the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. Man, we have been having such a great time. Don't forget, this is a supplemental uh, content or conversation that corresponds with the weekend message that we have here at our church. I encourage you, invite you to check that out. Uh, this has been an amazing series, our Rock, Rock Your World uh, sermon series, so check that out. And then again, follow us up that next week. We're releasing on Fridays. Put your questions in the comments. We'll do our best to respond and get to you on those. Uh, we're so grateful. Spread the word. It's all helpful. Again, this is supplemental. This is something to add to you in your journey, in your discipleship, and drawing closer to Jesus. Uh, so it is a privilege. Again, another privilege is sitting here with Pastor Teresa, a fellow Aguilar, although there is no relation, right? Yeah, that's Antonio right. Aguilar, Pastor Teresa Aguilar. And so we are just, um, we're grateful to be here with you, Pastor Teresa. Um, maybe let us know, obviously, if you were, if you checked out the message, we had something different for a weekend uh, yeah. message. We had a panel, and we're going to be with a couple of our panelists in this episode today. Uh, but we wanted to open with you, Pastor Teresa. Uh, I, I just thought the panel was wonderful. I am very grateful that we took time as a church to go into uh, singleness or focusing on living as single believers. Mm. Uh, I know you yourself has, have been the pastoral covering over our singles ministry uh, in season. So you not only are yourself single, but have worked very closely in yes. singles ministry. So your insight is obviously very great insight. <laughs> yeah, I have a little bit yeah, of experience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have some experience here. Um, so, and, and just uh, again, this setting is, we're, we're grateful for this setting because it's a casual setting and uh, just to have this conversation. Uh, I do want to talk on some of the things that I thought were just great points in uh, throughout the message on Sunday. And one of those things, or the weekend, was your time and emphasis on essentially ministering or doing it as a full-time mm. uh not full-time we say full-time minister and has a different context but maybe you could delve into unpacking that a little bit yeah. from what you spoke on the weekend for it i think there's hail <laughs> i think there is um there's a typical you know norman rockwell picture of life where right. a person goes to work yeah, yeah and then they go home after work and they spend time with their family and their home their children mm. their husband or their wife right and yeah. they they do this as a cycle of life and so when we have that thinking and you a single person doesn't have the after work built in family, yeah, yeah, yeah. then it's like there's this missing thing. What are you going to do? What do you do all day? Because right. you're not with your family. You're not doing the meals, having the yeah. conversations. Uh, maybe even they think you're not taking care of the home because right. it's a family yeah. thing. So I think when we say you can be full time for the Lord, you can give your devotion and your energy to the Lord as a single. I think it means bringing in that extra time that's automatically filled in with family stuff. Yeah, yeah. And being intentional about that, yeah, yeah. right? And being purposeful about that. Yeah. So for me, when I noticed that I would get home as a new teacher, a new high school teacher, which is an exhausting job, yeah. I would get home and I remember I had this little rinky-dink television and because I'm not an extrovert, I'd get drained at school and I would come home. I have no responsibilities. I don't have to feed anybody or change diapers right. or, or make dinner if yeah. I don't want to, right? Yeah, I can yeah. scoop out of the peanut butter jar. Right. Yeah. It's just me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would watch television and I noticed after teaching for several months that I was watching hours and hours. I was zoning out every night because yeah. I had no built in responsibilities. Mm. So I had to be intentional and I looked around me and I saw what my sisters in the Lord and my physical sisters were doing when they got home. Yeah. They were taking care of family. They were preparing for the next day. They were being very intentional. And I yeah. said, Lord, I'm going to be intentional and I'm going to be full time yeah. in that sense. And I'm going to use the same amount of time they're wow. investing. I'm going to invest in the kingdom of God. Yeah. And then my volunteerism went, went up. My willingness to take on responsibilities in the church, yeah. even though I had a full-time job, yeah. went up. And I began to look at that as my full-time responsibility. Right. And Lord, until the day comes when I have yeah. these other responsibilities, yeah. I'm going to invest the same amount of time yeah. into the house of God. That's awesome. I, I know that you had mentioned, and again, I think it's just such great teaching, not for just, you know, maybe you're single or you're not single watching this, and you had said this in, in your prayer, you know, we, we pray before the services and in your prayer. And I don't remember if you said it in the service, but you, you had mentioned how every 
married people know a single and mar single people know married people. And the reason yeah. why this is so important, because uh, whether you're single and you can t have this outlook even with your married friends and loved ones, or you're married, to have this understanding helps us to grasp and have great conversation with single people that we have in our lives so as to better minister to one another and I, sharpening one another with this outlook because like what you're saying, I, I, I see such an emphasis on fullness of life, right? So it's not like, oh, this these people get to be happy in life and these are the ones, you know, stereotypically eating the bonbons at home, which what you're saying Cereal is, for breakfast is kind every of like day. what you were doing, but <laughs> yeah. until you made that intentional decision. Yes. Now receiving fullness in pouring out into your church community and your loved ones as one who does does that. And now I know you personally, and uh, I think you mentioned it over the weekend, how being Thea or auntie and traveling and helping give financially and support and going to the, what's it called, the recitals and all the same, the yeah. games and all that, the same how you would pour into your own spouse or children has brought some of that joy and fulfillment as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and as you were talking earlier, I think when we look at full-time ministry, it can be the volunteerism here at your local church, right, mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. campus. But then I was reminded about how many times I tell my brothers and sisters, my brother, my sister, because I have all sisters, and brother-in-laws, I'll take the kids, you go on a date. Yeah. And I'm investing in their marriage. Right. I'm getting time with the kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Right, and right. that feeds my joy, and yeah. I get to love on them and build those relationships, but I'm also investing in their marriage, and that's full-time ministry. Yeah. That's being part of a family, you know, or times mm. when I've been on the East Coast on vacation and told my brother, hey, t take my sister out, I'll stay yeah. with the kids. And he's like, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, take a date night, right, while I'm here, because the kids were younger back then. Mm -hmm. And I think all of that, is us being devoted to the work of the Lord. Right. All of that is giving your heart and energy to what God is doing, whether it's in your relationships, whether yeah. it's in the kids in your life, mm -hmm. right? I've got little kids in my life that are growing up in a Christian home and those that are not. And I can be that voice, I can be that influence, I can bring them into my Christian home yeah. and introduce them to Jesus, even though maybe their parents are not. Yeah. Right. So all of these things contribute to the fullness of life and the full-time ministry idea. Well, and I'm hearing this recurring theme. It's almost like there's a scripture talking about it, like as unto the Lord, right? Like yeah. It's, it's un, as unto the Lord in the same way that we would do it. And I, I think that's really important because everything we do, not unto man, but as unto the Lord. And it, it helps with some of the purpose that maybe someone feels lacking, which kind of segues perfectly into where I want to go because you did touch on it over the weekend as well. Um the, almost the, the call to singleness. And obviously we were talking about the writings of the Apostle Paul and I wish you were as I were and what that could look like. And I think... He said it's better. Right. It's, <laughs> <laughs> and he said, it's, it, right, it, it, so it's better, which to me comes with, and he doesn't use the word, but it now introduces this word that we like and we understand in, in modern context is this call, right? So is one called to singleness the same way one would be called to uh, missionary work or pastoring or being uh, an evangelist. Uh, I know it's not maybe one of the offices of a minister, but it, it, it can be a call. And so how does one know if it's a call or, you know, like you mentioned, there is uh, there might be a grace to be single at a stage of life, but that doesn't maybe necessarily mean someone walks in tonight or tomorrow or whatever and 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 all of a sudden that changes or is because i think you had mentioned like maybe there's that time that you just know right we're like i think this is this is a call for me maybe you can touch on what that could look like or feel like even if it is just a season yeah i think anytime you're single whether you're younger or older the bible is super clear about giving yourself to the work of the lord mm -hmm. Right now, that may be you may be doing that while hoping and praying and begging the Lord to bring your mate. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because you want to have a family, you want to have children or for whatever reason. But I don't think that there's a call in the sense like I knew when God called me to full time ministry. Right. There was a moment in my life. It's right. written in a journal somewhere. Right. Yeah. I'm 17 years old. Yeah. But I never got the sense of your call to singleness. I had no idea in mm -hmm. every season of my life. 
that I would be here at 53 and not married. That right. was never in my mind as a 30 year old. Right. But I also knew, and I think this is distinct for people who can relate to a situation like mine, like even as a young person, I didn't want to have kids. Right. Everybody thought I would outgrow it. And yeah. I'm like, okay, I never outgrew it, right? right? I never really had a super longing in my teens or 20s to be in a relationship. I wanted to travel. I wanted to get educated. I right. wanted to start my profession. I wanted to serve in the house of God. But in my 30s, I went through a very painful season, which I touched on this weekend mm -hmm. in the Sunday services, yeah. about a deep, deep longing right. for the intimacy of relationship and marriage. Right. And it was stirred on by people around me who kept talking to me about it, right? right? right. Even ended up on all of these dating sites right. and right. going on a few dates from the yeah. internet dating world, yeah, you yeah. know? But it was in that season when I needed a word from God. Yeah, that's Because good. I was allowing all of that pain to stop me in my tracks mm. and to cry me to sleep. Right. 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 And when I got the word from God that I talked about this weekend by the pool, when the Lord said to me, do you want a king in your life? Mm -hmm. Then I made a decision that I don't. Right. I want you to be my king. Right. And then I was freed from the burden to feel like, how do I go make this happen? Right. And to serve the Lord. So when you say, I want you to be my king, Mm -hmm. Does that do you and because I could see someone watching gets encouraged gets inspired saying yeah That's what I want. So does that mean at that moment? I'm turning down a potential husband a potential spouse or it's just at that moment until the or is it one of those could it be? You know my I'm offering Isaac. I'm yeah. no longer going this in my own strength I give it to you. Maybe you bring me a spouse. Maybe you don't but I am now setting in my heart my honest desire I'm lifting the knife yeah. so to speak, right? And I'm going to say, you're an, uh, you, I don't know, you're enough, or I want you, you're what that would be. I'm going to allow you to feel my desire, that right. particular desire, right, right? right? Because he's also your king and right. you're a married man, right. Right. right? But there's that particular desire that I am surrendering and giving you as Lord. Yeah. I'm going to follow and look for your direction. But, you know, I think I know a lot of married people, including your wife, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who had a moment when they said, just me and you, Jesus, right. I'm never going to marry. Pastor Dan talked about right. that, right? Yeah, right? Bachelor to the rapture, two yeah. weeks later, he yeah. meets his wife. Yeah. And so at different seasons, people have laid that down yeah. and then God has brought... And then she met me. I mean... Yeah, I mean, then she was like, <laughs> I take it back. He is the man. Um, but for me, I never intended it to be for the rest of my life because right. I can tell you in my early 40s, I remember telling the Lord, okay, Lord, right. if you have any children in these loins... Right. You're going to have to do something really quick because yeah, yeah, I need yeah. to have them right. 41, 42 because right. I ain't having kids after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when I got past that age, I said, okay, I guess there was nobody in me that needed to be born right. and kept <laughs> going. But I was always open to that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So. Um, you know, I, I think that brings on a really cool concept um, because, again, I think we all know single people and then, you know, I'm sure. Because we're awesome. Right. Well, and, and it's kind of. Is it the thing, how, how often are someone trying to hook you up and the this and that, but... Please being, don't do that right, like being, unless they want like it. Like being fun, but also like, like, in, like you're saying, like in a serious note, uh, read the room type thing, right? Like, yeah. uh, like it, you don't have to bring it up every time or tell me every yeah, time. I think you have to be careful. Right. You do, because I have the most well-intentioned friends who will joke. Right. And I can tell you how the enemy can use that in my own life mm -hmm. is they see you as not enough. Yes. They see your life as lacking. Right. They're trying to fix you. Mm -hmm. And that can be heartbreaking. Right. Because I'm loving my life. Right. I'm enjoying it. I want my friends to see me as whole. Right. Not to be always like, you're always missing. Someday you'll get finished. Someday right. you'll. And that can be hard. Oh, so course. reading the room and knowing, even though I'm joking, is this person seeing it as a joke? Right. 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 Or. I can have this honest conversation saying, does that bother you? Right. And become sensitive to that. Yeah, for sure. And, and I think that's important to know, again, for married people watching and also single people to watch, that struggle, I would imagine, struggle with like, yeah, how do I wish my married friends would know something like this. I'm feeling like they have to go along right. with the joke. Right, right. Right. And when that, really they're inside. And, and maybe you could touch on this because even in that season, just like in everything that we say yes to God, then it hits the fan or then there's those nights Absolutely. or then there's that season or then there's that time yes i'll travel the globe then we're on the plane for 15 hours and like oh i'd rather just be in my bed or yes 
you're my King Jesus, and then I'm looking through social media and see all of my high school friends with their husbands and wives, and you know, there's still some of that same struggle, just like in everything else. Yeah. Any, any. You have to fill your life. All right. That's you good. have to fill your life, and that's why the Bible is really specific with singles. Yeah. Devote yourself to the work. Yeah. Right, and for women, devote your heart. Right. Because if you are not intentional, you're going to just live in your lack. Right. You're going to live in the difficulties, yeah. right? And you have to invest in your life so that you have those needs met. Yeah. A single person is not castrated, right? right? right. They're going to still have all of the physical desires. And so walking through that with the Lord, yeah. having people you can have those conversations with, and building intimate relationships. You have to have people that you're vulnerable with right. so that you have intimacy because God created us for intimacy with Him and with other humans, mm -hmm. right? It's not good that man be alone. Right. Same thing. So if you do not feel those needs, yeah. those intimacy needs, then in the moments of difficulty, of loneliness, yeah. if you're like, you know, me and Jesus all the time, you're still going to have those desires and you will fall. Well, I, I, you made me want to touch on this. And thank you, Holy Spirit, because I, I feel like, you know, there is another element uh that there are single people that were single because are, are now single because of divorce or a, a death a passing and so but now maybe they have children and so you're talking about fill your life but then i also th see some of the extreme like well now my kids are my purpose and now my kids are my identity or these other things how important would you say it is to still have some of you know these personal relationships maybe personal and I don't know if ambitions is the right word, but goals that you're striving to in your singleness, in your fulfillment. Because again, you know, you, you know the parent that now because they're either a widow or widower or they've been left, now they've projected everything onto these kids and then children will leave. Yes. Or, they, or they've almost spiritually manipulated them to make it where they don't leave because then you're leaving poor old mom, poor old dad, and yep. I made you my everything. Yep. And now you're going to leave. I don't know if you have any thoughts. And the thing is, again, you've worked in singles ministry, yeah. so it, it, you've experienced some of these in council. Yeah, and, and I was raised people. by a single mom. Right. 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 And I watched that happen. Right. And right. I have sisters daughters, with yeah. children who are single. Right. And I think you must be connected to something that's larger than yourself. So right. take advantage of the local church. Take advantage of a place where your children can go and serve and, and you can be ministered and you can build relationships where there's child care for you when your children right. are young so that you're connected to something that's bigger than you and yeah. you're not getting your needs met just by your children. And I mean, I can talk about my mom who is a senior citizen right. and a single woman who raised five girls right. always sewing into serving in the local church. Not something that took a lot of time. Yeah. She would greet right. because she could bring the kids greet still yeah. build relationships and it didn't she didn't have to have babysitters and things like that yeah. and then even as a senior and a single she's serving in the local house she's right. building relationships so that we as her children don't feel like we always have to take care of mom yeah, yeah. entertain mom be yeah. with mom and she's a blessing and not a burden mm -hmm. because she's made so built those relationships and found purpose in her life yeah. outside of her children maybe speak to some of the because I, I hear all these things and i hear that's hard that's hard that's hard. That's tough. And, you know, our word for the year is grace. Maybe speak to some of the grace that is required that we encourage people to lean into, um, lean into the grace for these seasons and these times. Yeah. Maybe, you know, you, at least on the outside, this is something that, you know, you're doing intentionally. And man, this, I'm going to choose to be full. Maybe someone watching or maybe someone that knows somebody that is not doing okay with it right and yeah. they're really struggling yeah uh, what how can we encourage them to lean into the grace required you know i think you're going to experience that grace after obedience mm. the spirit of god will tell you will draw you to step out he may draw you to singles ministry yeah he may draw you to serve with children's ministry he may draw you to ten more services a week yeah. he may draw you to get involved in something in your community where you're investing in other people and you're hesitant but you're sitting in the middle of struggles with your desires, with your longings, with the things that you want. And God's saying there's grace for you, which is the power to deal and process all those longings, emotions and lacks in your giving. 
Right. In your pouring out of your life, in your investing, because that's the principle for singles. So when we're doing that, it's the grace of God that's going to meet the inner need, take care of the longings, not allow them to overwhelm you. You will be able to go to sleep at night without crying. Yeah. You will be. And then you do have to guard your heart. Yeah. Right. We have to be responsible. Like God just needs to take care of this desire. And yet I'm watching romance movies five nights a week. Right. Right. Well, I'm fighting the grace of God, right? The Bible says, don't receive the grace of God in vain, which yeah. is God's giving me the grace, but I'm fighting it by my choices. Mm -hmm. So I do need to guard my heart because the grace is there, but I've got to step into it through obedience. That's good. One final question, kind of a fun one. I lo love your thought on this because I, I feel like I hear it thrown around. You got to put yourself out there. What, what, what do you say to something like that? Whether it's online and you mentioned uh, dating sites. Yeah, or absolutely. At, at what point is it like, is it yes or no, or is it like, well, you, what, what's I, your thought to those? If that statements? is your desire, right, to be married, right. to be in relationship, you have, you do have to put yourself out there. Right. You going home after work, right, pulling your car into your garage, going into your house, and going into the online, or where, you're not going to meet anybody, right, right. You have to get out there, get into places where you're going to find the kind of people you want to meet, right. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with being out there in the online world, right. right. But you need to tell them who you are from the beginning, That's right. Yeah. I am a follower of Jesus. I, they're not going to yeah. start calling right. you if they know what your values right. are. Right. But if you hide that, you're going to meet all kinds of people yeah. and be tempted and get into crazy situations. Okay. But yeah. you absolutely, yeah. if that's your desire, yeah. have to put yourself right. out there yeah. in healthy ways. Yes. And get into get into relationships with married people who know single people with mm -hmm. families. Mm -hmm. There's there's so much for it. That's why I love the house of God. Right. That's good. Because if you're willing, you mm -hmm. know, God will open these doors for you. Yeah. And I think we walk through them. For me, I am like, I'm not interested. Yeah. So I'm not getting out there, yeah. opening doors. I'm no longer on dating sites and things mm -hmm. like that, right. even though there was a season in my life. Um, so, but I, I'm open. I think yeah. that is wisdom. And just last thing. Now, you know, that was the you, last thing. I know. Thing. I know. That one well, last, last thing. Um, Typical you know, preacher. Again, you, <laughs> you had, you know, the, you, you shared the stage with a, a wonderful panel. Uh, maybe what was there anything and I, I didn't prep you I didn't prep her for this, this I wanted to um, what is there what else would you have wanted to add or share that maybe was on your notes but first time sake we didn't really get to get into or, or maybe um, like, actually one of the things in my notes was um, it's probably not what you're looking for no. but <laughs> <laughs> submit yourself to your pastor That's good. because that has saved me as a single person wow. I from the time I was a teenager I've always submitted myself to the pastor of my local church when I was going to go on missions when I was going to go to school when I was going to get a job I yeah. sought their counsel I've sought their counsel and God has protected me because I don't have a husband mm, so I want to make sure that I have the wisdom of the counselors yeah. of God in my mm. life as a single person I tease my married friends like you're not you're not in trouble for anything if he makes a bad decision, you follow him. You win the points, even though he's wrong. I don't have anybody to make the bad decisions. I got to make them all myself. Right, right. But I don't do that. When things are key and important in my life, I've submitted myself to the pastoral covering of the local church. And God has protected me. Yeah, so he's good. protected me physically. He's protected me financially, protected me relationally because uh -huh. of that. Well, Pastor Teresa, thank you for your time. Really, your openness and vulnerability. I, I love it. And I know... If you're, if you're at our church and you see Pastor Teresa and you're struggling with any of the things, I know she's more than open Absolutely. Uh, to have a conversation. Bless you. We're going to be back in just another moment with another one of our panelists. Thank you again, Pastor Teresa. God bless you. You're welcome. You. Hey, we're back with another one of our panelists from this weekend's message. None other than Miss Jazz Monet. Hi, everyone. How are you, Jazzy? I'm doing well. Uh, we are just uh, excited. Uh, one of the cool things that... Uh, for me, it was cool to see because we've gotten to work together over the years uh, in some in the same departments. And so I feel like the church got to see what so many of us already know. Uh, and that is just, man, the, the God in you is just so amazing. And let me clarify that, you know, we know you're not God, right? Like, <laughs> right. Uh, but the, the, the Holy Spirit shining through you, um, really. And I know that you've just um, done such an amazing job over the years of serving here. Thank you. And uh, your insight, I thought, was so refreshing to the conversation and, and so imperative. Uh, it's so good to have because I think, um, you know, we, we earlier in this podcast, we were having the conversation with Pastor Teresa where there's a, there's a sense of, hey, this is where I'm at. And I've been through some of these years. I've been through some of these struggles. Whereas you, 
find yourself, and you even said it over the weekend, like, I do want to be married. I do want to have children. And the conversation was, yet here is where I am. And I'm sure, similar to Pastor Teresa, um, some of your thoughts in terms of what fulfillment in this season looks like for you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, would you, what would you say or what, what are some thoughts that come to mind regarding your singleness and the fulfillment that you're finding or what you have, what work it takes to do that? Yeah. From a little girl, I knew the realities of this life. Mm. And um, How so? I've been through a lot of trauma, mm. a lot of pain, a lot of um, situations that shows that people are their fault. Mm. You know, we're human, yeah, yeah. you know, that humanness of this world. Yeah. Um, and so I felt like God got my heart very early on mm -hmm. where I felt his presence as a little girl. Yeah. And that has kept me. Mm. And so the same Holy Spirit, the same thing, presence that I feel that I have now with God, yeah. um, I, I felt it as a little girl. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I knew that I had to place my life in his hands. I knew that he was the answer then, mm -hmm. and he's an answer now. Yeah. So growing up, I always desired and longed to be with him, mm -hmm. and that has kept me um, where I am today. Yeah. And it's just because I've been connected to him as best as I can. Of course, there's seasons where I kind of disconnect it, right? Yeah. And I have to get back on. Yeah. Um, but um, it just continues to grow. You can mm -hmm. go deeper and deeper with God. Right. There's no end to him. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's how I, I started. Yeah. As a little girl, I knew that I had to hold on to right. Jesus mm -hmm. to get through what this world was going to throw at me. Yeah. Well, in that, in that same vein, we can we can jump right into one of the many mic drop moments that you had. Um, and, and really what I mean is just these uh, nuggets that I feel obviously were from the Holy Spirit uh, to encourage all of us, uh, to encourage all of us listening, um, because I think it spoke to me even as a married man. Uh, when you when you spoke about the fullness that we have in Jesus, uh, and I, I don't have the exact quote, uh, but I, I believe you shared it in, in, in all the services, but something to the extent of having fulfillment enough in Christ, because if we were, if our longing or if the position is to think that we'll get that from a relationship, we're going to really miss out because not only will we not get that fulfillment from man or woman, but we'll, even when we do get to that relationship, if it comes, we still won't know fulfillment. Right. Uh, and I can only equate it to trying to make our desire for that relationship or spouse fill the God-sized hole. Right. And if we don't recognize what, that in our time of singleness, in that season of singleness, that we have to be fulfilled enough in Christ to then because then we'll never really be able to do it, even in a relationship. Yeah. Because there's still a God-sized hole in all of our hearts. Mm -hmm. And if we try to fill it with that spouse, we're going to find ourselves in a world of hurt in our own lives. But also, there, we never. it's not fair to them. Yeah. It's not right? Fair. Because we're expecting them to do something that they never can or were designed to right. do. Right. It's finding that place where you say, God, you're enough. Mm -hmm. God, I love you so much more because if yeah. I get my husband, right, right. And I pray that I do, he's not going to fulfill my soul. Right. Your, God, your soul longs to be with Jesus. Right. And so if you don't get that now as a single, right. you're not going to get that in marriage. Or you will because right. Jesus is good and his grace comes. Yeah. But there's going to be this uphill battle yeah. where you have to learn how to be a wife and have this high expectation on your husband yeah. where God has never called you to put that expectation because yeah. he's God. He can, he can fill it, not right. your husband. Right. Right. Um, and so I want to encourage singles to find that that with God because mm -hmm. your soul longs to be with him yeah. and your husband cannot feed. He can pray over you, right? right. But that's that God sized hole. He cannot fill. Yeah. Not at all. Um, and I think it just sets up marriages and relationships, especially nowadays yeah. where people are just getting divorced. Right. They're not happy. Right. Right. But that that's a covenant you have with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And because your husband's not fulfilling the gap size hole mm -hmm. that you that only Jesus can fill, you're just going to leave and run away. Right. Right. Or that's that's not how God has created us. To yeah. Be, right. Yeah. So, you know, give some of the insights that you've learn and grown in your life as a single person um you you have not been married before and so you are you are single 
as you have been. Yeah. And and the reason why I clarify that is because you you are still in this place where you're finding joy. As you've gotten older, some of your friends are getting married. Yeah. What are some of the real challenges, full transparency, of walking out this? Or someone says, "Hey, Jazz, that's easy for you to say." You, well, you're connected to Jesus, like exactly, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, what is what is the biggest challenge or a challenge that you find yourself fighting to overcome? Time. Mm. I turned 30 last year, mm-hmm. right? We have, since a little girl, yeah. women w- women have always desired to have kids and be right. married. We right. watch it in the princess story yeah. where right. a man's going to come and save you yeah, and yeah. love you and you're going to yeah. have kids. Yeah. It'll be this perfect ever after, right? Yeah. My parents, they met each other when they were 16 and 17. Oh, They've yeah. been together ever since, yeah. right? My brother has met his wife when he was 15, yeah. and they've been together ever since. So time is something that I have to have to fight for, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Each birthday, sometimes I get a little nervous. Right. Like, oh, God, I, yeah. I, I, I want to be married. I want to yeah. have kids, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and so I feel like it's like a, this consistently surrendering to God. Right consistently saying god you're good and you're faithful and you are with me right and you hold and i lack no good thing because right. i have you right and, and I, I can say that i can back that up because you're not just saying that mm-hmm. right meaning you still serve with still, everything you I still do. give with everything you still attend outings and yeah. you still have friends and family you you are living that where you're going to grab a hold of the fullness of your Absolutely. singleness. Uh, I, I think of, and we talked about it over the weekend, the joy that there is in singleness. I mean, I, in the spirit of full transparency, I know my wife always says like, I wish I was single a little bit longer. She always yeah. talks to, she, yeah, she always she talks, talks to, to about, like, about it. Because there is a sense of, you know, the time that you maybe spend thinking, hoping, wishing. Yeah. And it goes back to that whole, really it's because you're more married to the idea of being married Ooh. versus what, what will no longer be there, right? And yeah. in, in, in terms of once you are no longer single, mm-hmm. it's not, you don't have the same liberties or freedoms or whatever language you would use there. Right. Um, so I think that is important for us to know. And again, to further back what you were saying, uh, and Pastor Teresa said it as well, in still finding fullness in our relationships yeah. and serving in the house, being around the house, connected. connected you know, yeah. you, 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 you're not a walking sob story right? right married people or other single friends don't avoid you because all oh, you oh i just wish I, oh if only i was here with my boyfriend if only yeah. i was you know and and i and again that's not to um put those people down but obviously there was a struggle but mm-hmm. i would just say you focused on jesus and that's yeah. what got you there right Absolutely. i mean you didn't just wake up that way it was a in ch- intentional choice picking him right he chose us first right. he loved us first right. and continuing to pick him yeah knowing that he's going to be with you and having that community helps me mm-hmm. so when i'm having a moment where I, i'm crying right? right there's things that happen to me that has really put th- some walls up that i have right. to fight down and right. i'm like this is the reason it's my community that come and say, that's no longer the truth. That's yeah. not your truth. What right. you've been through is no longer your truth. Because you're single, you still are whole. You still are beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And it's my community mm-hmm. that helps me when I'm down and out. When yeah. I, they have to remind me, Jazz, what did the Lord say? Yeah. Right? It's your community. And that's going to change your perspective. Yeah. Who you're around is going to help you build you, the God in you, that yeah. Holy Spirit, yeah. and edify or they're going to build that flesh, yeah. right? Come, come to the club or come, come. to. I've had so many people right, right. tell me so many things where yeah. they try to convince me of having sex outside of the marriage, right. where they try to convince me why you're not going to the club. Right. But then it's my community that then turn around and say, no, we're not doing that right. because you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. And I have this thing where I've seen women chose the wrong guy mm. and it sucks the life out of them wow. i've seen women that have been called by god to do what he needs them to do talented women mm-hmm. where they were confident right. you know and now that they have married that wrong guy it has sucked the life out of them yeah and i said god you have built me you have restored me and that is precious yeah and so i'm not going to allow anyone to come and take away what you have done yeah right and yeah. who you marry 
is so important. Yeah. Who you create children with is so important. And so I have always, God has always reminded me of that. That's good. Right? Remind well, me. In that, same, in that same vein of thought, let's go into the question I asked Pastor Teresa, because um, you're talking about it. What, what is your thought to the, you know, just the fun term of it's like, well, you got to put yourself out there. What does that mean to you or what are your thoughts on that? You do have to put yourself out there. Right. I yeah. remember I was, I was joking around. I was like, do I? Yeah, when, you, when you said right. I was like, do I put myself out there? Yeah. Um, Because I can tend to say, God, I want a husband and, right. and I want children, but I'd be closed off. And he's right. like, girl, I can't. Right. You know, I'm in a community, right? right. I'm here at church. I'm here doing and serving, right? right. So in a sense, I, I'm there. But yeah. um, I do say put yourself out there. Right. Keeping your values top tier right right he should be someone that is in church already Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. Uh, hopefully you know um that is in his word yeah that is dedicated to god first and then everything after right and you can see those qualities off the bat right yeah um and so um i definitely think put yourself out there you know well now and i would say you know going back to the community idea because then you think of like well you got a big brother like me if someone comes around (laughs) they're gonna have to impress a lot of people because you've so entrenched yourself with community you have sisters that are going to be looking out for you yes. you have big brothers you mm-hmm. have spiritual dads they're going to yep. say no who's this guy yeah. <laughs> right and i and i could just think that the importance of that so yeah. so as to better help you in some of these decisions so it, i think it gives some some sense of security in putting yourself out there if you and maybe that's a good signal if you can't bring them around your community then that's that's something go to be ahead said and run. right go ahead and because, it's a no it's because a no they, for me dog because you know what they why you're keeping yeah. them yeah Right. Yeah. You know, like I'm not going to take them around them because I know what they're going to yeah. say. And if you know that, then you're true. Just, and then it's no. not, it's just, it's just no. Hard pass. And God can change, but then don't date him until God, he's right. in the church and he's right. connected. And he's we submitted. call that in Christianese missionary dating. <laughs> yeah. right? No missionary dating. No, not at all. Not, you, don't, you don't lead them to the Lord and then right. you love if God, even, serve God. Right. And, and it's okay to say, hey, come to church. Right. Let's be friends. Right. Right. Let's be friends. Let's right. go to church together, you yeah. know. And take that time where he is spending time with the God. And mm-hmm. if God has called that to happen, where right. he, you get married, then it will happen. Amen. Um, and so I, I desire to have someone to serve with me. Yeah. I desi- I'm an internship director now. Mm-hmm. I desire someone that's willing to pour into the next right. generation. Right. And so I need someone that wants to do that as yeah. well because I, I know I've been called. Right. And, and if God's going to bring you someone that's going to equip you, it's going to help yeah. you along yeah. the way. Right? What I would say... So from the single man perspective, you know, there are single men uh, either watching or that, you know, uh, it's it's the same. I remember n- knowing what I was called to do yeah. and knowing I had to find a wife that was compatible in the same way. So there is the sense sure. that and I don't want to, you know, compatibility is a slippery slope, but meaning in the, in the same way that, you know, you're saying from your perspective, like, hey, you have these desires, you have yeah. these things, these calls that, you know, you want someone that will come alongside. And that goes, that goes both ways. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Meaning, you know, if someone, um, if, if a man is, is looking for a wife, he who finds a wife, it's a good thing. Um, you know, finding a wife that is not going to be pulling you away from the call of God, but pushing you towards in right. the, the same way goes for both men yeah. and women. Well, Jazz, uh, one, one thing I do want to just say, last question to close out. What was there anything on your notes that you didn't get to for time's sake? I know we were kind of wrapping up towards the end of the service that maybe you had down in your notes that you didn't get to share that you'd like to share with us today. I feel like I forgot to say God is the bread of life. Mm. Right. So that's what my not my argument, but my stance of my my stance of living is God Mm -hmm. is the breath of life. Jesus Mm -hmm. is the breath of life. And so holding on to that really just diving into your relationship with God is going to help you along the way. Yeah. And not only that, it's going to help you into the next season. Yeah. So I know that I'm going to be better prepared yeah. to be a wife. I'm going to be better prepared to be a mom because I'm going to yeah. be so connected with him. And I'm a, I'm, I am already learned how to listen to his voice. Right. I already know how to study and go it's to my, my prayer room. I'm yeah. going to know these tools right. already that some people might not have to learn right. along the way as they are married. I have these right. tools now. And he's going to equip me. And so I, I just I want to encourage the, the singles to really, really dive deep. There's no end to Jesus. There's no end to knowing God. You have a choice and you have the opportunity to do that and right. be connected into a church. 
I know the world is saying you don't need a church, but that's a lie from the enemy. Right. Church was God idea. I came to this community broken. I came to this community so just like so far. And my community has truly poured into me. My pastors have truly poured into me where I have seen God move in my life. I have seen God restore things that I thought would never be restored. And so it's so important to find a community, find a church and a pastor that's really um, speaking the word of God and teaching you how to divide the word as well. That's and good. so that's what I want to encourage the singles uh -huh. to do. Live a Thank life you. in fullness. I'm living my best yeah. life now yeah. here. And I know until eternity, uh -huh. I mean, all the way to the eternity, I'm living my best life because he's with me and he is my, the bread of life. Come on, preach. I know yeah. we let you go. I'm, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I know. Thank you, Jazz. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, guys. God bless Again, you guys. hey, just tuning out. Letting you know, thanks. Continue to spread, help us spread the yeah. word. We pray that this was something that was beneficial for you. And we'll see you next week. God bless you. Bye.